What's up Wastelanders? It's your boy Kubrick and I think it's about time to get back to building Fallout. What do you say? I mean after the mid-season finale we had, what, a month ago? The time has come to put on your pip boys once again and venture to the Mojave Wasteland because we still have a lot of work to do with this beauty. And today we'll be starting the raider camp that many of you have been waiting for for a long time. Initially I wanted to make it all in just one video, but there are going to be so many details here that I didn't want to rush it, and today we'll be making about a half of what I'm planning here. So go ahead and grab those pipe rifles and get ready for a fresh new dose of radiation, because we're starting right now. Oh yeah, but first... I have to give a huge shout out to you guys. Yep, you heard that right. I want to thank each and every one of you that helped me get to 10,000 subscribers. It really means the world to me and I will gladly make more and more content for you guys because 100,000 is still a long way to go. But the time to get sentimental will come later because I'm planning a surprise for you next month. But now, let's finally get back to building the most detailed Fallout mock there ever was. You'll see. So, as you probably already know, the plan is to make a raider camp on top of this already great scene. And how I see it is we are going to have a junk fence in the front, just like taken straight from the settlement system in Fallout 4, with a bunch of fortifications, tires, barricades, and all the other good stuff that they can use for defending their base, and in the middle we'll have a throne for the leader, some wooden shacks or something, and of course lots and lots of post-apocalyptic trash we so often see in all of the games. And what I've started with is the right side of the mock where I placed a simple piece of a wired fence made with just stretching a net between two poles made with candles. And besides that, I started to make a wooden fortification here as well that I plan to cover with some kind of a junk roof. I of course used a lot of tires filling up the gaps since they are the most common piece of trash seen in the games. But to be honest, I have no idea why there are always so many of them in Fallout games. But at least I will finally be able to use the tires that I've been storing for years and almost never really used in my builds. But going back to the camp itself, in the back I made use of an old fabric sail I had and stretched it between poles as well to give the raiders some cover from the Mojave sun and stick some regular raider decorations like a bunch of chains and a head stuck on one of the poles which for sure adds a lot of coziness to the camp, right? Well, maybe not. Okay, so let's get back to the wooden shack then, or at least the part I did for now. Of course I made it with lots of small parts making up the details on the wall and the floor, which will probably be the texture I will be using on the entire fence, and having that established, let's now take care of the roof. And here I used one of my favorite techniques, connecting tiles and ingots on top of a net which gives an amazing shape, mainly because of the shape of a beam it is placed upon. It's a relatively simple technique if you know how to start, with some inverted tiles underneath just to cover the net, and it will be covering all the beauty inside of the shack simply just by laying the roof down loosely on these poles and just snapping it in between the crooked corner posts. Near the road I of course used some more tires and even one of my broken reddish brown plates which fits to the team perfectly and with a few more tiles on it we have now this part of the fence done. And if you're wondering why the part with the net isn't covered more to protect the base, just wait because I was thinking about placing a turret here to keep the unwanted guests away, but we'll get back to it later in this video. For now, I'm in a junk fence building mode, so let's leave this side for now and jump on to the other side of the road. Here again I'm using a lot of different small elements, wooden boards, 
chains and even more tires that I managed to integrate into the wall itself and even though it wasn't an easy task to do, I'm glad of how it's going, so let's move on. And again, I'll be using a net over here, this time as part of the wooden fortification covering the window holes, just to have the raiders a bit more covered and I think it's not a bad idea at all. The entirety of the fence on this side will be of course built around the car rack that is standing here, but for lore reasons, the raiders of course had to remove the fusion core reactor from it, because other way this would not be too good of a defense structure at all. So now, moving on with the fence, I've added another window, this time with a piece of a torn cape instead of a net, and the rest on the left side I want it fully covered just to give the raiders a bit more safety inside. And here I finally used one of the raider stickers I made for the previous episode, along with some smaller wooden ones from my western saloon sticker sheet and even a new lattice fence piece that came out last year, which fits here just perfectly. Overall I'm very happy of the shape I managed to get here, as it's all crooked and sort of broken while still being firmly connected and pretty stable as for a structure this complex. But for it to be completed, we still need to make the backside, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okie dokie. Okay, I got carried away again and besides making the back, I also finished the top and made a couple of other pieces for the barricade but more on that in just a second. First let's get a closer look on the completed front and top of the wall, to which I've added a few more poles, a crooked covering on the top made simply by connecting 2x3 plates by a single rounded 1x2 plates each, and of course topping it all again with a bunch of different styles and ingots. As for the back, nothing out of ordinary here, just lots and lots of small pieces on the walls, a few more poles and of course a narrow sidewalk just to have the raiders be able to look through the partly covered windows. And this way we have the entire fence completed from both sides which in my opinion is looking totally awesome, so with that I started adding more and more details to this part, like this crate of goodies with dandy boy apples, some mantats and other camps, and a couple of grenades and a molotov, just to be sure no one sneaks inside of the camp. But you're probably curious, what about the Nuka cola vending machine and the concrete barricades I placed here, and wondering why isn't he talking about that instead? Bruh. Well friends, I got you covered, because not only I used the vending machine as a barricade here which already is looking great, but also I made a quick tutorial for you guys, so let's check out how I made it, shall we? I based my design on the one from Fallout 4 as it is my favorite from the ones we had, but of course I had to make some compromises given the variety of pieces I had on me and the scale it is built in, but I think it came out quite accurate to the source material. For now I made it with the pieces I had, but the front panel will be for sure replaced with a red ingot when I'll be making my next order, and on the top I'm thinking about adding a sticker to act as the monitor that should be there. I also decided not to cover the shelves with a glass door and rather just drop a few glass pieces on the floor in front of it, but of course you may use it if you wish when you'll be building your own. 
And the other element I've added is a simple concrete barricade we so often see in different bases around the Commonwealth. But here I had to simplify the shape a bit to have it in a proper scale, but I have to say it came out quite well, especially with that No Brotherhood Allowed sticker in the front. This wasteland sucks! And now finally, to finish up the defenses, I made a turret I was talking about before to put behind the fence, and this is a piece that I'm very proud of. I mean it almost looks identical to the ones from Fallout 4 which given the scale was not an easy task at all and required a bit of an illegal technique to hold the legs from the bottom, but hey, the end result matters more than how we got here, right? And this is where I wanted to end today's episode, but I came up with this fire barrel in the last minutes to give some light to the raiders during the night. So let's just place it somewhere in the camp, drop a chain in it representing the fire and I think that will be enough for today. Not only I need to order a few more pieces for the rest of the wood structures, but also I didn't want to keep you waiting for this episode for too long, so the rest of the camp will be made in the next installment of this series. But looking at how it looks at this moment, I couldn't be more hype for what is still to come. But how do you like what I did here today? Let me know in the comments below and if you have some ideas on what else I could add in the next episode, don't hesitate to write it down there as well. Oh yeah, and of course smack that like button and consider joining the 10,000 subscribers we already have because there are a lot of great videos coming in the future. But with all that said, I will see you all in the next one here on Q Brick, and until then, as always, just remember to keep it bricking.